$12,460 in only six weeks. In this podcast, this trucker, this YouTube subscriber of mine will explain exactly how he did it. Stand by. Let's get it. Hello guys, this is Ty AK, The Flip Man, and today I have a YouTube subscriber, not a student, a YouTube subscriber that has made over $12,000 in six weeks. If my information is correct, he'll correct me if I'm not, but I think I'm <laughs> correct on that. So his name is uh, Lionel, he's out of uh, the state of Louisiana. And um, we're going to get right to it. You're not here to hear me. You're here to hear him and his story <laughs> on how he's taken the 200-plus video that I always preach about that I'm free, and he ran with it. And I say you can't be a student. I'll take that on. Don't, <laughs> but um, the videos are there for, you know, those that want to take advantage of it. It's real, you know. So how's it going right now? It's, it's going wonderful, man. Uh, I, I've made it. I'm here on the Flip Man channel. I have made it. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's going great. Oh, no. It's going great, man. I appreciate you reaching your hand out to me, man. I really do. All right. No problem at all. No problem at all, man. Uh, Lionel, is, uh, he has a unique uh, situation because you're a trucker, right? Yes, sir. So, Full time. So you're 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 a long hauler or what? No, I'm driving locally. I've I've done all the different facets. I, I've been over the road for quite some years. I've been on operator, which was over the road within the last four years. Been local, so uh, five to six days a week, home every night. You know, okay. Twelve to fourteen hours a day, sometime, but uh, no more over the road. I got you. Okay, so uh, let's get into man. Um, uh, let us know about uh, how I guess you got to the point where you even got interested in real estate. Not in, to, to the point you got started doing it, but how? Just let me know your story on how you got interested in real estate. Well, for me, uh, it, it was kind of simple, and, and like I said, um, I started out like most people seeing the Carlton Sheets commercial. Um, didn't know much about it, was in trucking at that particular time. Uh, all I knew is that I wanted to work for myself. Um, and the couple of guys that I knew personally that was in the real estate, they were really just uh, buying rentals at that time. They had several rentals. Uh, and I wanted to know how to get into the game, how to get started. And uh, it took a lot of, it took money at that particular time, at least as far as I was concerned. It took good credit. Um, it took all those things that I really wasn't quite ready for as of yet because they were buying these rentals. They, they were more or less buying holes. Um, and with seeing Call to Sheets program, I really didn't know what this program was about, but the large amounts of money that uh, was being made supposedly. So I ordered the little entry level $9, $10 that uh, booklet or DVD they came to me. I can't remember which one it was. But when it came to me, uh, I read it. And it really more or less was just a teaser. Uh, there was always to go to this next level, you need to get off a three, four, or five, whatever it was. And of course, it lost me right then. I lost interest at that point. Uh, but being a trucker and hanging around those guys, it's always talked about, hey man, why don't you own four or five trucks? I know a lot of guys that own trucks doing real well for themselves. So the entrepreneur spirit was there since it wasn't going to be real estate to say, well, how about become an owner operator, you know, have my own truck and I'm still in business for myself. Well, that idea went out the window real fast. Once gas prices started going up or diesel started going up and maintenance. And once I started researching and say, yeah, that may not be for me, even though I did get a chance to do that um, around 2012, somewhere around that time. Um, just kind of fast forward and around 2013 on YouTube, like I always am, and ran across someone that was talking about wholesale. Uh, all I knew was either do rentals or you become an agent. That's all I knew about real estate. And uh, when I saw, um, she pretty much gave a whole breakdown. She's out of Florida. I don't know if you want me to say her name or not, but uh, uh uh, Mr. Uh, Steph Davis. Steph Davis was the first person that I found. I think flipped this wholesaler or something is what she does. 
And I actually ordered her course, which was no fluff, no hype, 90 bucks, I think it was. And it actually took me from A to B, how to look up a deal, how to do whatever. And I thought that was real, you know, interesting. And from her deal, I was introduced to a friend of the family that has been doing real estate in my area for about eight to 10 years. Okay. And um, talked with him and became his acquisition manager, right? And this was about 2014 is when this happened. And uh, approached him about being a wholesaler. And as he said, well, you don't really know much about, you gotta pay your dues. And I always hear you talk about bird dog. And so that's where I had to start at. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with bird dog slash acquisition manager, I would talk to sellers. I would go out and drive for dollars. Uh, I would make all the phone calls to the title companies, to uh, the, uh, the sheriffs, you know, to find out about taxes, so forth and so on. And that was a good experience for me because I actually got a chance to understand the grind, understand what it takes, learn how to talk to these people. Um, and whenever I got a deal, that's pretty much how I got paid is I got a percentage of every deal that I got. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about working full time and having a family and then have this extra income coming in doing about two deals a month. It was pretty good. Uh, then, as you say, I started looking at the bigger checks. <laughs> and uh, I started thinking, I say, well, if I'm doing everything except closing, I'm doing every step except that final step of getting a buyer. Maybe I want to look into that. Allow my wife to talk me into going to real estate school. <laughs> 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 and uh, actually, it would be a year in July. I went to real estate school because it would have benefited me to be with this gentleman because he was doing a lot of short sales. He was a great, he's an excellent rehabber and he was doing a lot of short sales. Anything that he would rehab, I would be able to put out on the market, you know, and, and help him get rid of. And uh, so I let my wife talk me into it. I went through a two week course and halfway through it, I recognized that this is not for me. Wow. This is not for me. Being an agent is not for me because I was already hooked on being the, uh, 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 you know, the, uh, the real estate investor, wholesaler. Mm -hmm. I didn't have as nearly as many rules and regulations. And uh, I thought the paydays were a lot bigger. I didn't have to split with anybody. Didn't have to split with the house. Didn't have to split, you know, other than he and I splitting on the deal. That was it. And uh, I became overwhelmed. And that's what I tell anyone. Only take on as much as you can do. So here I am trying to be a husband, be a father, work my full-time job, get in deals from him, and study to become an agent. It was too much. Mm -hmm. And in June of last year, I said I quit. I walked away from everything. It was just too much. I walked away from everything. And uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to just drive. That's what I'm going to do because everything else is just too confusing. Well, I still had that little thing burning on the inside. and said, no, man, you, you really want to be a wholesaler. That's what you really want to do. And my wife didn't know anything about wholesaling. So she was saying, why are you getting into something that don't work? You've been in prepaid legal. You've been into all these other uh, companies. And you have never brought in a significant amount of money. So my mind was, I know this works. I'm seeing the videos. And um, that's what started me. I think I found you probably at the end of 15, the beginning of 16. Because I was looking at these so-called gurus. And I said, well, what is this guy talking about? And I kind of clicked on one video. I said, okay, you don't seem like a guru. <laughs> clicked on another, you know, I clicked on another. And I said, okay, he's giving some in And the information that you were giving, man, is what I was going through. Fear is what held me back since 2014 because I didn't want to step out on the front line. I didn't want to have to deal with the paperwork. I didn't want to have to deal with a savvy buyer. I, I was scared of making a mistake. Yeah. And I kept hearing you say, I still make mistakes after 14 years in the game. I kept hearing you say, you got to make mistakes. And we'll get to it whenever you want to. But my first deal, I made every single mistake that I was fearing. I made it. I made, I forgot what to write on the paperwork. I didn't get him a contract. Uh, it was crazy. It, it was crazy. I, I, but whenever you get to that, we, we can talk about that. But um, 
what I was fearful of, it happened to me. It happened to me. It, but like you said, it didn't cost me any money. It just cost me a little embarrassment. And they wanted to close. They didn't care. They were like, okay, we'll wait till you get the paperwork. We'll wait till you do whatever, whatever. We just want to get out of this thing. We're living in New Orleans, which is about an hour away. They had a property here in Baton Rouge, and they were sick and tired of it. How, how and, did you come across that particular property? I'm glad you said that. Man, 100 bandit signs would do the trick every single time. I um, I ordered my bandit signs January 1st of, of, of this year, and I was so anxious to order. I ordered 200 signs with no stakes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm going back to the deal that you made the mistakes on. Okay, that was my first one. Yeah, it was band of signs. Yeah, oh, you got that from. I'm, but you didn't close that deal, did you? Or did you? Yes, sir. yes, sir. I did. I JV'd it. Oh, okay. I JV'd it. Yeah, oh. on the 29th day, I JV'd it. Uh, okay. My son and I put out 50 band of signs, uh, and I said, you know, there's no turning back. Once I buy these band of signs, once I put them back, we we can't quit. Mm -hmm. I put them out on day two. The seller called on day three, a buyer called. Wow. And I said, this can't, this, this, <laughs> this is crazy. It, it happened so fast because in my mind, this is not going to happen. I don't believe it's going to happen. It's been happening to everybody else. It ain't going to happen to me. Day two, that phone rang. Said, I saw your sign. We've got a multifamily unit. We're sick and tired of it. Uh, we want to get rid of it. Well, by me being an acquisition manager, once I ran the numbers, it really wasn't a deal. But because they were opening up lease purchase, that made it become a deal. Mm -hmm. And the buyer that called, he was all for lease purchase. Once he walked the, the, the property, he fell in love with it, couldn't get right on the numbers, right? He couldn't get his financial right for whatever reason. Uh, a day before closing, he calls and tells me on a Friday we were going to close that Monday. I can't do the deal. My fi financing fell through. That was a heartbreaker. It was a heartbreaker for me because I didn't have a buyer. I didn't have a buyer's list. Mm -hmm. And uh, what ended up happening, we're talking about this was on day 28. And these guys are pretty sad. They're calling me and saying, uh, we're going to sue. We don't have a, uh, we don't have a contract with your so-called buyers, but we got one with you. We can take you to court. So I'm sweating bullets. I'm sweating bullets because I don't know how much of this is actually true. And I remember you saying they can sue you for anything. doesn't mean that they're going to necessarily win. And um, what ended up happening is on the 29th day, another investor called and said, I saw your sign. What do you have? I said, well, at the moment, I don't have anything. Uh, I said, uh, but I do have something that I need help on. She said, well, that's what I am. I help out other wholesalers. I help them sell what they got. I'd at this point, this is the 28th day. The contract was going to be over. They had already been calling me and saying, we can't wait to get out of contract with you because we have a buyer. We're going to sell it ourselves. At this point, I was kind of like, kind of relieved, hoping that, okay, just get this out of my hair. She goes to a REO meeting or what have you, REI meeting, I'm sorry, and she calls me. She said, I got a buyer. He wants to go and see the property in the morning. Okay. By this time, I've already gone through three buyers to tell to kind of back up a little bit. This guy was the third one. The second person couldn't get right on the pricing as well. Mm -hmm. So I just knew it was going to fall through. I get a call the next morning at 9 o'clock. She said, you're not going to believe this. The buyer and the owner went to elementary school together. They didn't even talk about the property. They talked about old times. He's going to pay the full 165 for the property. We can close tomorrow. Man. <laughs> So, <laughs> so just to be clear, this is this is this one of the, the three deals that you did in the six weeks, or this this is deal this is deal number one. Okay, all right. This is all deal right. number one that I, I thought I had lost after about thirty days. She found the buyer, and the buyer ended up knowing the seller. Okay, and uh, it was a six thousand dollar. We you know we split that three thousand and as you say what's half a zero? I was happy to get that three thousand. It could have been thirty thousand for all I care because I showed myself that I could do it, and that belief factor was was was, was more important than the three grand. And don't get me wrong, the three grand spent well, but uh, uh, well, <laughs> so but it was the belief factor that I could actually do it. Okay. And uh, I credit that all to you because you kept saying you're going to make mistakes. What is it going to cost you? 
And I got a steak dinner out of it from the sellers after all that was over with, man. They were like, hey, congratulations, you did it. Let's let's go get a steak dinner. I, so that worked out well. <laughs> it worked out real right. well. But deal number and two. Deal number two, once again, was from a band sign. And um, this situation, a very uh, older lady, uh, she basically had a grandson to call me and say, look, my grandmother saw your sign. She has a house that's been sitting up for about 10 years. She needs to get rid of it. I was a little bit more savvy with this one, but going back to the first one, I was so bad, I didn't even list it on Craigslist. I didn't even market the property. Oh. I didn't I, Because I forgot all of that. Mm -hmm. I just, it, it didn't come to me. On deal number two, I had one buyer in my phone that is a guy who buys up, he's been buying up a whole lot of rentals. And even though this was uh, in one of the areas, as you say, that we see on TV, it was a huge... Uh, house, it, it, right. you know, even though it was in a war zone, it was about 2,500 square foot. Yeah. And um, what happened was someone took it and turned it into a boarding house. So this house had about six different rooms in it. It needed work. She was uh, real adamant on her price. She kept telling me, I paid 52 for it. I'm not going to give it away to you. You want me to give you property? We went round and round. Well, I found out after talking to her daughter, she's elderly. She's a little bit sickly. So she kept repeating the same thing. So it took me to have patience with her. And uh, I called a couple of buyers. They made me an offer. I called her back and said, well, look, I got, you know, we're at this number. She accepted it for one day and called me back the next day and said, no, that number ain't going to work. I need enough money to go on a cruise. I said, <laughs> I said well, okay, ma'am, let me go back. Let's try to see what it is that I can do. And I tell everybody at the beginning, I'm going to do one of three things. Either I'm going to buy it myself, I'm going to buy it in rehab, or one of my partners is going to buy it. But either way it goes, I'm doing this to make money. So they already know that from the very beginning. Man, that I'm going to monetize. Hey, that, that's, a, that's a good way <coughs> of putting it, that you're going to buy it yourself or one of your uh, partners that rehab are going to buy it. Exactly. That's a good way. Yeah. Right. right. So, so that way they never ask me or they never say, well, who is this sitting at the closing table? I, I never get that question. So after probably about two weeks, uh, I sent my wife over and she was able to get her to sign. It took her about 30 minutes or so. Well, she what, was signed the price? Her, what was the price on it? The price on this one was, uh, she wanted 20 K. Okay. She wanted 20K and I think I made 23 on it, something like that. It was my lowest. 22 is what I made it on. I made 22 on it. And um, so once again, what's half a zero? Yeah, what's half a zero? So uh, I, I was more happier uh, to be able to help her out because this house had actually flooded. If everybody's familiar with the flood of, in August that affected Louisiana, it had flooded. It's been set up for 10 years, and it really was a, a gold mine in the area, the zip code that they were in. Okay. And uh, so deal number three was one of those home runs that people like you and I dream about. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one of the houses that flooded. Lady contacted me and said, I've been through uh, Katrina. I went through the flood in New Orleans. My house is worth 120. I only want 30k, and it's paid off. <laughs> what, was the, what, what was the ARV on it? What was it? 120. 120. Oh man! <laughs> oh wow! Ooh. 120, and she said, "All I want is 30k." So I, I the house is paid off. Uh, all I want is 30k on it, and uh, I'm, I'm ready to go. And oh. so, on. Um, go ahead. See, that's. See, that's why people say, well, why would someone sell a house that could be worth 120 for 30? Exactly. Now, this is a unique situation because you're in a down there in Baton Rouge, all that flooding went on, you know, back right. this year or whatever. So I'm sure there's opportunities all over the place. But even if it wasn't that, she was just motivated. She, the right. house wasn't an asset for him anymore. It was a problem. And right. A problem solver. Oh, exactly. And once again, that came from a band design. She said, I took a picture of your band design in traffic about a week ago, and I'm just getting around and calling you. Um, I've already accepted a job in Atlanta, and I'm just waiting to get this house sold. And once I saw it, uh, they had renters in it. She said she was tired of the renting business. Even though it was gutted, uh, they kind of tore it up a little bit, but the house was wonderful. On this one, 
I remembered. I put it on Craigslist, and in 30 minutes, my phone ranked seven calls. I see you just put this put on. Uh, I put it up for, uh, I said, 45, our best offer. Okay. And uh, someone texted me and said, we have 38 cash right now. Uh, uh, can we? Can you please take it off of Craigslist? We want the house. So I just thought it was somebody that was talking. And it was a husband and wife couple. Mm-hmm. And uh, the gentleman said, I have 38K right here, right now. I'm looking at it. I said, well, I tell you what, I'm going to need $1,000 earnings money deposit written out to me. I want to make sure that you're serious. I got a call at work the next morning at 830. Mr. White, I've got the earnings money deposit cashier's check waiting on you to pick it up. So I knew that these they were serious. Uh, you know. know. <laughs> And uh, so what ended up happening was is that I met them at a local restaurant, and this is, once again, I'm making these rookie mistakes. I brought the wrong paperwork. And the wife caught the paperwork. She said, well, this shouldn't say this. It should say something else. I said, ma'am, you know what? I said, you got to forgive me. My wife usually takes care of all this. I'm slipping. I messed up. I said, I live. She said, look, go home because you're helping us out. We've been looking for – flooded homes for the last six months. We found one. You took it off the market for us. Go home and get the paperwork. Come back. I bought them dinner. They were happy. And they gave me $1,000 earnings money deposit. Mm -hmm. We got all the paperwork. The next day, my wife went and dropped everything off at the title company. I like to hand deliver it myself. And we closed. How did you, uh, um, as far as, uh, we're going to come back to this, but as far as choosing your title company, we didn't get into that on deal one and two. Who chose the title company on deal one? Well, on, on the very first deal, it was all about uh, the buyer. The buyer is, is pretty heavy here in uh, Baton Rouge, so he has a company that he's been dealing with. So I just kind of piggybacked off of that. I actually had to work that day. I couldn't get off of that closing, but the partner that I JV'd with, mm-hmm. uh, she was able to make it. And they just had a check waiting for me at the front desk. Wow. Uh, on, on, the, on the second one, it was, um, I actually, uh, the buyer on this one as well, the buyer said, you know, this is who I use. Uh, this is where we're going. No problem. Uh, on the third one, my parents have some, rentals here and uh i use i went with theirs okay on on the uh number one and two uh what did you do to let them know hey i'm uh, this is the seller this is the buyer this is what i'm getting paid this is who i'm closing with did you explain it to them or did you send them over a document or how did no you- actually what i did is you know, that you mean as far as the title company yeah, the title company, yeah. Well, I always make a call. Whenever I find out what title company we're with, I always call. Okay. And I always say, you know, look, uh, you know, I tell them that either if you remember me or my wife brought in paperwork, I am the investor. I'm the wholesaler. Mm-hmm. So this is what I like for you to do. I always tell them, I say, I really don't like to include what I'm making on the deal. I say, I think that that's personal. I like to keep that to myself, and I have had deals or heard of deals falling through because of, you know, people saying that. Mm-hmm. So basically, as long as it's not a loan and you're not with a mortgage company, they take it off. It's just on your side. It's just on It's just on the seller side. They don't include that. Okay. And so whenever they give you uh, your check on both times, they kind of folded it. Mr. White, this is your documentation. They set it in front of me. Got the you know buy you to sign what they sign the seller sign what they sign and it's a happy day everybody's happy nobody is even looking and nobody you, you sit there at the closing table we're talking about where we're gonna eat lunch at nobody's even talking about who's yeah. gonna make what how everybody got what they wanted out of the day <laughs> exactly all right so, exactly so, so back to deal three we were at the um you you met them you you went back home and got the the, the right paperwork. And uh, how long did it take you all to close after that? Uh, it took us about uh, three weeks to close because there was something on the seller on the title that she didn't have um, that she needed to work out, something that she actually needed to pay mm-hmm. before uh, it could go through. And so what ended up happening was is that uh, the buyers were calling me like every day, like, look, we're ready. We are ready to go. 
And on this particular deal, what I forgot to do, once again, a rookie mistake, I forgot to tell him about the closing calls. Mm -hmm. So, as Mr. Ty Taylor said, I'm not going to let $600 stop me from making 8000 Yeah. And I said, look, you guys pay half for the closing. I will gladly play the other half of closing, and we're going to make this thing happen. And so they gave me the earnest money deposit plus about seventy four hundred, uh, about sixty four hundred dollars, minus the six sixty that I paid in closing. Correct. And and it was it was a happy day. So it was a happy total, day. So your total take on those three deals were a little what not quite twelve thousand four hundred and sixty dollars. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. Okay. So, um, so um, uh, as far as when you're doing a band and sound, just getting that to just for a, a moment, um, I know Baton Rouge, because of the flooding, it probably ruined the so-called great neighborhood and the not-so-great neighborhood. So it really didn't matter where you were. And right. so there's so much chaos going on. It's probably a lot easier to put band and sign pretty much anywhere you want to put them or whatever. Am I wrong on that? Or, or uh, Well, there's still some areas uh, that were not affected that is still a no-fly zone. Okay. Uh, but now, now, some of the, the, the other areas, yeah, it's everybody and their mama. They are all on top of each other. I buy houses, this and this. But um, here's my thing. Nobody ain't putting out as many numbers as me. We putting out 250 a week. Wow. There ain't nobody putting out 250 a week. I see him and I don't see him, but I got my my 24 year old. I hired him. That's his job. He gets a buck a sign, and oh, we wow. on Friday night. We 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 doing it. So <laughs> oh, man, that, 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 that's that's powerful, man. You got your son involved, <laughs> right? Are you right. In the business, or he just entering, just getting that 250. Well. I, He's 24. He he's initially his, his interest is that 250 up front. Yeah. But he's been asking about rentals. He's been asking about buying my first property, and I love that about it because had I had that at 24, then it's no telling where I would be. But uh, I, I love it. But it's a twofold purpose, you know. I drive. He jump out and put the sign out, and we talk. You know, we talk about distressed properties. We talk about how to identify, and and it and it works out. It works out. So he know on Friday night, that's what we doing. Ain't no clubbing. Ain't no partying. We, we you know, we, we, we partying with these signs so we can party at the bank later. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, wow. You make me feel horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it took a little while, man. I even got, I think my wife was even out with me. You know, but my wife is the boss lady, so the boss lady likes to tell me the way it needs to be done. So, oh yeah, is she? man, I had to get in that story later on, man. But yeah, man, that's uh, yeah, I've got more hugs and kisses and thank you for those uh, three checks than I see. <laughs> Hey, yeah, right. so uh, she's my number one supporter, man. She's my number one fan now. Number one fan. Okay. So. But yeah, man, I really have been a, uh, a challenge to get you on. I know you're busy, man. Yes, uh, sir. I'm pretty sure that what you're doing is going to change soon. That I can yes. <laughs> you know, or whatever. You keep knocking them down like that in that short yes, time sir. frame. So, man, 2017, uh, easily six figures. You know, at the pace that you're I, I, I am. I, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that because we're gonna make this thing greater. Because we join, we gonna join up on the on, on the on the flip man train. So if I'm able to do what I'm doing by myself, imagine with your 14 plus, what we could take it. You know. So hey, that's that's what the plan is. And I'm saying in front of all the subscribers, you know, whatever you're doing now, eventually make it to where you just like you pay for college. 60, 70, 80,000. It ain't going to cost you nearly as that much to get on the flip man train. Oh. I tell anybody, look. <laughs> I I tell any, you know. Say, man, just for a lot of stuff you said, you, I say, man, he been watching my video. <laughs> <laughs> man, I say, I say, so that's yeah, so, uh, man, yes, sir. I really appreciate it, man, um, that, you know, um, I had a, I don't know if it was a young man or whatever, but um, the other day that was texting me just back and forth, just constantly trying to get me just to work with him for free. 
It's not that I, I just don't want to do that. It's just that he didn't even take the time out to watch the video. I don't want to sit there and watch videos. If you don't even do that, that that's a red flag for me. You're not going to do what it takes anyway. Right. The information is free. Right. You know what I'm saying? So uh, anyway, man, but um, it, I, I really appreciate your time, uh, Lana. Hopefully people uh, will be able to springboard and take your information and your story. If nothing else, for inspiration, you did uh, uh, provide some good content. Co- taught me a couple of things, just in working and dealing with uh, with sellers. Uh, but uh, yeah, man. So, hey, sky's the limit, man. Hey, keep putting them signs out. Hey, and the checks will keep coming. Keep mama happy. Look, I, 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 I will also. I, I will tell people this in closing, man. Is that uh, just be original and have fun with your signs. Everybody says I buy houses and we buy houses, and uh, I use your same company. I call them and I say, look, I need to get the Ty Taylor discount. I call them up and I talk to them personally. At the uh, uh, but this is what we've been doing: eighteen by twenty-four yellow. But this is what I say. I said. My mom put my dad on the couch because he didn't buy your house. You know how many people call me and say, I don't have a house to sell, but your sign is so funny. I would buy from you versus these other signs. What what, 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 what did it say? My mom put my dad on the couch because he didn't buy your house. Call him, please. Oh. <laughs> I've got people saying you got me laughing all the way to work, man. I wish you well on what you're doing, and I get a lot of people calling me just congratulating me on the signs, man. So it's been fun. Just be different. Yeah, just be yeah. different. Have I fun like with it, I, I and like uh, it. you know. So if I see it in Alabama, I know where it came from. It's all good though. It's enough money for everybody out here. Hey, all over, man. These videos go all over the place. But uh, right. wow, that oh man, that that was worth the price of it right there. Right, uh, it's to put something funny there to uh, make people remember your message versus exactly. Wow. That's what it's about, That's originality. Uh, yes, sir. Right now, man, I really, really appreciate. Hopefully, people will enjoy this. Uh, hopefully, the audio and everything was good. So, um, hey, um, any last words, man, before you go? Look, man, my, the, I will tell anybody is stop allowing fear to paralyze you. Buy those signs, put those signs out, and be prepared. I wasn't prepared. I didn't have uh, my purchase agreement, which, I, which is yours. I'm using your one page. This is what I wanted to say. I'm using your one page, simple purchase agreement. I had the 10, 12 page. It confused me, so I know it was going to confuse a seller. I couldn't explain it, but your page, I can explain it. I can explain it. I'm using your page. Make it simple on yourself, but be prepared because when it happens and you're talking to a buyer who says, I can close as soon as you can get a clear title, all cash, I'm ready to go, they're going to want you to move fast. They're going to need that paperwork, email, faxed over to them, whatever the deal may be. And uh, just be prepared because it's going to happen. If you put out enough numbers, somebody's going to call you. Okay. Well, that's what's happening, man. And um, again, I appreciate it, man. Keep bringing it. Uh, I know we'll be in touch or whatever. Yes, sir. To help you any way I can, man. So um, again, we appreciate you uh, sharing your story, Lionel. And um, thanks, guys, for watching this. And uh, we'll we'll see you all on the flip side. Yes, sir.